A very warm welcome to the World of Lord Russell podcast talk show. And today's show is Sportsman, Royalty and Politicians, which captures the life of a charismatic, articulate, sophisticated, unique, extremely talented and intelligent man who's, you know, an acclaimed sports artist and not just sport either, but artistic brilliance with royalty and politicians too, whose career spans over 70 years. Yes, folks, it gives me immense pleasure to welcome on the show, Paul Trevilian. Welcome to the show, Paul. I'm so proud to be on the show. Oh. Lord, you're the man. You are the man. Oh, thank you very much, Paul. Your life is absolutely fantastic. And when I was writing these show notes, my word, it was a fantastic a joy to write. You've had a tremendous life. You really have. So I'll tell you what, let's start from the beginning, you know, which is always the best place, uh, which is, you know, uh, for the show and, and for yourself as well. You were born in Tottenham, North London, and from an early age produced artwork for publications like Eagle, whilst, I may add, still at school. <laughs> Quite incredible. An interesting beginning, Paul. Well, what actually happened is that um, it's like everything else in life, what I've learned is that you can't teach talent. You can teach technique, but not talent. And um, I know from talking to everybody, and I've talked to them all, I've seen them all, and um, they all say the same thing. They didn't do a lot at school. <laughs> um, even Stanley Matthews said that to me. He said, I went to Hanley School, but Paul, I, I, I didn't pay any attention. Dixie Dean said the same to me. And so did Norman Wisdom. Everybody said the same. And schooling was the same for me. I didn't do a lot at school. I wasn't interested in history. I wasn't interested in geography. I just wanted to draw. That's what I wanted to do. And it was my mother who discovered that I was some sort of an artist because I always insisted on gravy. And my <laughs> mum used to wonder why, even when I had a dessert, I still wanted gravy. And she used to say, no, you can't have gravy with a dessert, but why do you always want gravy? And I used to show what I was doing with my fingers. And then she looked at it and she said, that looks like our dog. That looks like wow. the horse. That looks like... And my dad said, you're imagining it. It's just your imagination. It's just playing with it. Just leave him alone. He's got to learn to keep with a knife and fork. And <laughs> I said, no. I think... He said, well, give him a pencil. And so my mum gave me a pencil and I drew the dog. I'm two. And I drew the horse. And they wow. said, you can draw. You can draw, Paul. And that moment on, that's all I wanted to do. And when Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs came out, I went there and I could not believe, I'm five, I'm five years old, it's 1939. Mm. And I couldn't believe the dwarfs, they moved. And I, I, want, I want my drawings to move. I want my drawings to move. And my dad, who was a bus conductor, had left his job when the war broke out. When war was declared in 1939, my father used to go into a grocer's and they said to my dad, look, I'm leaving, John. I'm leaving because it's the war. I don't want to be here in London. I'm leaving. And he said, why don't you take it on? My dad said, well, I, it's not for me. I'm happy on the buses. He said, but you'd make a great shopkeeper. So my dad did eventually get talked into it. He took it on. And what happened was this. I, when I saw the dwarfs, I used to draw them all. And my dad said to me, do you realise that the one that they all want, and he had 400 customers, he said, the one they all want is Dopey. So you, you draw Dopey and we can sell them. And we sell them at 2p each. <laughs> and I was doing these drawings of Dopey, one after the other. And my teacher said to me, look, you're a delinquent. You've ah. got, you, you're just not getting anywhere. And I'm wasting my time talking to you. So he said, send your parents. I want to talk to them. So my dad went there and he said, what's the problem? And he said, it's your son, he's never going to amount to anything. He's completely blank in his head. He's blank in his head. My dad said, how much money did you earn this week? He said, I'm not telling you. What do you mean? Why are you asking that question? <laughs> it was 
if I told you how much he earned, and he told him, he said he earned thirty pound this week, and that was a lot of money then in nineteen thirty nine. Oh, that was it was! Crikey! From that moment on, I've never ever done anything other than draw. That I've failed be. every exam. When I took the final one, I failed the 11 plus, failed the 11 plus again. I found I went to Tottenham Tech uh, to, to to get into the Tottenham Technical School, failed it. And my dad said, why do you keep failing these? I said, because I can't read the questions. And I told you, do you like writing? He said, but you can draw. If it's English, draw Charles Dickens. If it's history, draw Henry VIII. If it's, I said, I've got it, Dad. I know what you're saying. I'll do it. And I did all these drawings on the back of the paper. And Wonderful. then they called me up at Tottenham Technical College and they said to me, no one's ever answered the questions like this. You've answered the English questions. You have a drawing like Dickens. It's excellent. It's wonderful. Wow. You've answered the one on history with Henry VIII. Look, why didn't you put down the answers? And I said, because I can't read. They said, well, don't worry. You can win us a gold medal. And what we're going to do, we're going to teach you to read and write. Oh, that's a fantastic story. That really is. That really is, Paul, an amazing story. And, of course, in the early 1950s, Paul, you were a young Spurs fan, we know that, and you had some interesting nicknames too. You were called the Toulouse-Lautrec of Tottenham Tech and the Bear. And you started drawing a regular quiz for Spurs magazine, The Lily White, with one referee question per issue. So firstly, <laughs> I've got to say this, where did those nicknames come from and how did you get to write the quiz in the Spurs magazine, Lily, The Lily White? Well, I was, um, my father took me to see my first match. That was in 1937. I was three years old. Wow. And he said to me, look, I would have took, taken you to see the cup match with Everton, but they're playing away and... It's, it's, they're not going to win that match. So um, uh, you have to wait till a couple of weeks before. I said, OK, I'll wait, I'll wait. Because all my brothers, my two older brothers, they went to football and they were all talking football. So they drew 1-1 at the Everton and they come down. And on the Wednesday, my father took me to the match and I saw Dixie Dean for the first time. Wow. Couldn't believe when I saw Dixie Dean. Yeah, what and what I saw then is so different now. Mm. Because everyone roared their heads off. Good old Dixie, good old Dixie. And Dixie waved to them, Dixie waved to them. Good old Dixie, good old Dixie. And when he scored, they cheered. They wanted to see him score a goal. And they were 3 1 up, but they got beat 4 3. And, uh, and I then did the Dixie Dean story much later on because I got caught up with the Lily White magazine. Now, what I did with the Lily White magazine. What I've learned in life is that people like to be drawn. Mm. So I said to Jack Solomon, who was the president, he was the president of the Lily White magazine. I said, Jack, I want to see the fight between Randolph Turpin and Sugar Ray Robinson. He said, really? I said, yes, uh, but I'm, on, I'm going to draw you in the Lily White magazine. He said, when? I said, next month I'm drawing you in the Lily White. Oh, yes. He said, right. Uh, I said, so can I have two tickets? He said, I'll give you two tickets. I went to the weigh-in at Windmill Street and I had a drawing of Randolph Turpin and a drawing of Sugar Ray Robinson. Wow. And I walked up to Sugar Ray Robinson when he, when he had finished talking to the press and I said, can you sign this? And he said, I saw you walk up. What do you do? I said, I'm an artist. He said, well, stick to drawing because when I see you walk up, you've got no balance. You're not going to make it in sport. I said, <laughs> I know that. Yes. I know that. And then Randolph Turpin was great. He said, look, I'll sign it later. And I thought, well, I'm not going to get that one signed. And, you know, a year later, it came to me in the post. Because I always used to write my name in a dress on the back of them, anything, just in case they didn't sign them. And then I'd leave them with them and hope they would send it. So Randolph Turpin did. So that's what I was doing at school. Then I got involved with Lily White magazine. Yes. And 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 out and there was out we'd signed Alf Ramsey. We got him from Southampton. And Alf Ramsey went on to win the World Cup, as you know. But that's when exactly, he yes. Tottenham I did a drawing of him heading the ball. 
And he phoned the editor, Ralph L. Finn, and said, can you get Trevelyan to bring that drawing to the training ground? Because that was always at the training ground. I never did any schooling. Yeah. So I, I took it in. I said, yeah, yeah, Alf. And I thought he was going to sign. I told all my mates at school, Alf's going to sign it. Alf took it, tore it up. That's the only time someone's tore up one of my drawings. And Alf said, the higher the ball in the air, the lower the sand of the play. Do what a player does best. What do I do best? I said, you pass the ball, you knock it 30 yards, it goes straight to it. Uh, right. Now, if you want to do someone heading the ball, draw that loft house. But don't draw people doing things that they don't do best. So Interesting. That, I was. I learned. I, um, Bill Nicholson gave me the best advice ever. All he ever said to me was, sharpen a few more pencils. Get busy. <laughs> and he checked me. And I, I used to sharpen the pencils. Well, that's fantastic. What a great story. You know, it really is, Paul. It's fantastic. And from the 1960s through to the 1980s, you designed and illustrated pieces for the Daily Mirror, Daily Express, The Sun, The Daily Telegraph, The Times and TV Century 21. And you work, your work, sorry, has been syndicated worldwide. So your brand of artwork was truly identified as a product of pure genius and quality, Paul, wasn't it? Well, the one thing I did... Look, I was born... 1934. Mm. So in 1939, the war was declared. I was five. And all through the war, I used to look at Winston Churchill with his little victory sign, a big smile on his face. And I thought, we're going to win. We're going to beat Hitler. We're going to beat Hitler. We're going to beat Hitler. So I was happy with that. Really happy. And it kept me going all the way through. Even when we was in the shelters, during the... During uh, school time, this is true, that there'd be day, uh, daytime raids and the teacher would say, right, everyone stand up. First line first, first row first, the first line first row and march, don't run, march to the shelter because your, your soldiers without uniforms, yes. your soldiers without you. We said, yeah, we haven't even got guns, miss. Don't worry about the guns. You just go to the shelter. So we used to go to the shelter, sit in the shelter, and then you used to go, someone would be crying, saying, oh, I heard a bomb then, I heard a noise, I've heard the guns, I hope, I'm, I hope my house is still there when I go back. Yes. That was frightening thing, you didn't know. And then oh. kids would come to school and say, look, I've got some, I've got some shrapnel, my, my dad got me this, he's in the war, and look what he's got me. I thought, God, I, how'd you get that? And then you wouldn't see that boy again because his dad got killed at the front. Yes, so we never said to anybody during the war, yeah. see you tomorrow. She may not see him tomorrow. So yes. that was a line you left out. So all this time, when Winston Churchill in 1954 was 80, the House of Commons and the House of Parliament, they got together and they presented him with a painting by Graham Sutherland. And I thought, that's great. And Churchill hated it. And his wife, Chris Clementine, she destroyed it. It was oh, wow. blood. So I thought, that's not right. So the next year, I did a drawing of Winston Churchill, as I saw him, smiling, with a big smile on his face. I thought, that's what I'll do. I did this drawing. And I, I was working there for Lashley Honig and, uh, and, and in South Audley Street. And they we were designing something for for Bernard Sunley. Now, Bernard Sunley um, had a magnificent boardroom. I've never seen a boardroom like all these chairs. And he said to Laszlo Honig, we've got all these chairs and the, they sit in these chairs too long. And the board meeting should be over, I want it over in 10, 20 minutes. But they still sit there. I can, what can we do to my, so Laszlo said, can make a smaller chair? He said, no, they'd know that, they'd know that. I said, put pony skin. They said, what? I said, pony. I said, I sit on them ponies when I go to the seaside and it sticks through you. And it goes right through your trousers, like little needles. Like it. And you all have artificial. And so the son said, I'll have artificial. Yes. And we did that. He said to us, every board meeting is over in 10 minutes now. They get out quick. They don't sit around. So that was good. So 
I've got a good relationship with him. And what I did, Laszlo said, look, Bernard suddenly during the war built a lot of airfields for Churchill, a lot of airfields. He knows Churchill very well. So um, if you do that drawing, I said, well, I've done it. Look, you can see it. And that's what I said. Had you got him smiling? No one draws I, churches. I said, but that's how I saw him during the war. He said, right, I'll get Bernard Sunley. And Bernard Sunley sent it to Churchill. And then I'm in the showroom. And I'm in the studio now drawing. And then suddenly Rose Honey. Now, she was Rose Rosenberg. That was her real name. And she was Randy McDonald's private secretary. They were Labour. And she was in America uh, uh, um, on a tour, and Churchill was out of office, and he was he was um, he was on a book. He was he was he'd done a book, and he was on there promoting a book. And she said, and uh, so she was talking to Churchill on the phone, and she said, "Look, you got his Churchill's on the phone, just like that." That was, but then she knew him that well. Yes, he gave she gave me the phone, and the voice said, "Churchill here." Is that Trevelyan? I, I said, yes. Be at the Burnett Sunley Buildings next Wednesday, 11 o'clock. Oblige. I went the phone. Wow. Said, so he said, oblige. What does that mean? He said, that's a summons. Yeah, you've got to go. <laughs> so we went together. Me and that's home. We went. And I, saw that, I saw Winston and he had the drawing. Wonderful. And I said to him, I can't believe that you like it so much. He said, this is excellent. You've got the twinkle in my eye and you've got the smile. But I was amazed when you walked through the door. I was expecting someone so much older. I said, well, and I did look very, very young for my age. And he said, look, I tell you, where was you born? I, I, I said, um, London. He said, did you get evacuated? I said, no. He said, so your boy from the Blitz. I said, that's right. So he said, um, I said, but I always knew we would beat Hitler. He said, no, I, I was the roar. The nation was the heart. That was the heart. And he gave me one bit of advice I've always followed. He said to me, carry on drawing. Make sure, make sure that you never follow in somebody else's footsteps. <laughs> do, Good advice. Never advance. That was Winston. Good so advice. Said, never, never, never give up. That was Winston. What a great lesson. I've, I've learned from everybody I've ever met. In fact, when I was doing the dwarfs in my father's shop and we were selling dopey and we weren't selling, we, well, we sometimes sold grumpy, we sometimes sold happy and we sometimes sold doc. But we never sold bashful, sleepy, and sneezy. And I thought, I wonder why that is. And I draw them well. I draw them really well. But we never sell them. Never sell them. And it's always dope. He's the big one. And then in nine, in and then one day, one of our delivery men came in and he said, um, "Those drawings on the wall. Who does them?" He said, "My son." He said, he doesn't, yeah, he's five. Five, and he can draw like that? He said, yeah, he's always been able to draw. You don't teach talent. Teach technique, can't teach talent. And he, he could always been able to draw, as simple as that. He said, well, I've got a daughter, same age, same age, and she's talented. He said, I'll tell you what, I'll bring her in. And the next time he turned up, this is true story, true story, because I've got all the cut, I've got the photographs. If anybody wants to see any of this, you uh, anybody who wants to uh, get any answers to any of this i uh, uh, you could show it to him on screen and she, he said i'll bring her in and she got on the counter my dad's counter and she danced up and down singing at the top of her voice and i thought i can't believe that <laughs> oh that's that's a talent and who it was it was shaney wallace no. and she played Nancy in the film Oliver, which had Oliver Reed, had Bill Sykes, and mm. it had Rob Moody as Fagan, a massive hit, massive hit. They still show it every Christmas. They do, and, and that was Shaney Wallace. Wow. And I didn't know at the time. And I met her recently, and she said to me, Paul, 
I said, do you remember when you danced on the counter? She said, I've danced everywhere. But where? <laughs> <laughs> That's a fantastic story. It really is. And then, of course, the cult classic cartoon strip, You Are the Ref, which was responsible for around 90% of all the 1970s playground rows, of course, made its news newspaper debut in 1957, featuring a series of hard hardcore refereeing dilemmas. And it demands you react instantly and accurately to, to the situations you face. Answers at the time came from Stan Lover, head of London Referees Association, then, of course, Clive Thomas, and finally, Keith Hackett. And, of course, Keith Hackett's been on the show last year. Fantastic man, Keith. So how did this brainchild, You Are the Ref, come about, Paul? Well, in 1957, I did a series for the Sunday People mm. called Hey Ref. I didn't call it you, are ref. I called it Hey Ref. Hey Ref! Hey Ref! What's he doing, mate? Guy's an idiot. Now, I always stand behind the goal. Always. And that way, I can see the visiting team. I can see all their defenders in the first half. And in the second half, I see all the forwards. And then I can make little sketches, make notes, do drawings. Behind the goal, right behind the goal. And I've never ever, I didn't ever, ever, ever catch the football. I didn't ever. Oh, I stood behind always behind the goal. And the ball used to fly in, so the people were catching it. And then one day I did catch it. And that was at West Ham, Upton Park. I'll come back to the bit about you out of there. At Upton Park, I caught the ball. And Gordon Banks come round. Jeff Hurst had hit it, and I caught it. And Gordon Banks come round and said, Can I have the ball? Can I have the ball? And I looked at his hands and I thought, I look at my hands, they've not changed. I looked at his, it broken, twisted. So I went straight into the Sunday time. I said to John Lovesy, we've got to do a strip. And I'll draw the hands of Gordon Banks and we'll find out who broke each finger, whether it was George <laughs> Best, uh, um, Gordon, uh, Gordon uh, um, uh, Francis Lee, um, Pele, anybody. I don't, let's find out. And Hunter Davis was there, the man who wrote the, Be the Beatles book. He, the Hunter Davis, Hunter Davis said, I'll come with you. And we went there together. And we, Gordon Banks did that. And I've got the thing that appeared in the Sunday Times. And it's all the geography. But I was always behind the goal drawing the players. And then I heard the fans saying, hey, I can't look at that. That referee's an idiot. Murphy doesn't know what he's doing. Murphy. And I thought, no, I had a book given to me at school because I learned how to whistle from my teeth because I used to play in goal. And when I played in goal, because I couldn't play on the field, I didn't have any balance, but in goal, I was good. I could catch lightning. And I'm in goal, this is true, and the people, the, the, the teacher was always in the, in, the, in, the, in the other half and there was people scoring goals who were offside. And I thought, I've got, to, I've got to, so I had practiced all through the cricket, all through the summer, <whistles> the referee's whistle, <laughs> with my teeth. I used to run out, the fool would come for, I'd go, <whistles> oh, sorry, son, offside. What the bloody hell is that for, eh? <laughs> the ball up. So Brilliant. they said, you mustn't do that when, when, when we're playing into house matches. You mustn't do that, Paul. Uh, but you know, you're doing it. Here's a book, learn the rules, learn the rules. But when we play other schools, you can do it. And when we played other schools, we never got beat. Never got beat, because I blew them up. I blew, and then, <laughs> whether they were onside or offside, I blew them up. Oh, so, good for you. Uh, behind the goal, I've learned all about, <whistles> I've got the book they've given me. I've learned that whistle. I've got, it's a referee's whistle. <laughs> I, and I thought, this is, they're idiots. I know what the rules are. So I did Hey Ref in the Sunday People, and they had to answer the question, what happens if, if this happens? What happens if this happens? And they had to answer them. And it was so popular that Shoot Magazine got onto me and they said, can we have that series? I said, yes, because why well, I agreed to do it for Shoot, when I was at school, I wasn't the greatest. I was good, but I wasn't the greatest. I, well, I wasn't Rembrandt then. So what I used to do, they would use my work. And yeah. I'd be so glad they'd use my work. I clap my little hands and I said, God, I've used it. Oh, oh. And then they said, can we have it? I said, yes. They said, but we can't use a ref. We can't use that. It's, it's not right. Uh, we can't use that. It, it, but what we will use can come up with a different name. I said, yes. Um, 
you are the ref. You be the ref. You are the ref and give the answer. They said, good, love it. So you are the ref started. And what happened, Stan Lover used to do it. He was brilliant. And uh, and then we, we got uh, the book. The other, he started to do it. I won't mention his name, but they called him the book. Everybody will know if they know who the book was. He was the one who <laughs> broke when someone scored in a cup in a World Cup match and they headed a ball in, but he blew up and when the ball were left for the corner, it was a corner. So uh, I watched the cup final and Keith Hackett, 1981 cup final, and that was Spurs and they played Manchester City and Keith Hackett gave a penalty. And I said, that's not a penalty. It was Miller. And I thought, that's not a penalty. And I, I was so c convinced of that. And I made everybody hear about it. And so I got a phone call. It was Keith Hackett. He said, Paul, have you checked? I, I said, yeah, I've checked it. He said, do you still think it's not a penalty? I said, I've spoke to Miller and they all agree it was a penalty. He was like, he said, look, I said, can you help me out? I said, uh, um, we, I do, you are the ref, but it takes him two or three days to get the answers. And I'm racing like mad to do the drawings to shoot. I said, I'll return them in two hours. Wow. Better than that. I yes. could take him on the phone and he'd give the answers straight away. He yeah. was the best. He was the best. And he still is. Yes. He was a great referee, wasn't he? And I was so pleased to have him on the show. And of course, I also had Paul Miller on last year too. So some top, you, you know. Paul Miller on. Well, yeah. he's a different class, that guy. Oh, a different class. Oh, top man. They're both the top best, guys. Don. You had the best. You had Jimmy oh, Cricket. Jimmy Cricket as well. Yeah, he's been on the show. I've had some great people on, and I've got some great stars like yourself, of course, today on the show. And stars, and great Jimmy ones Cricket. coming up. He's a great guy, Jimmy Cricket. Fabulous. <laughs> absolutely. Tell you, I work with him. Yeah. I did I did shows with Jimmy Cricket up in Blackpool and everywhere. Jimmy Cricket, the funniest man ever, and never he never swore, he never did. No, a, he doesn't. He was he was the he, the cleanest comic, and he still got him to laugh. He Magic, did completely clean, never yeah. swore, never never did anything off the cuff. It was always absolutely chiselled every line, every punchline, right the way down, bang, 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 bang. Absolutely. I, I tell you this, I when I got into show business, I worked with Norman Wisdom. Now, what Norman Wisdom said, I did eight weeks, summer season with Norman Wisdom in Torquay. Mm. Norman Wisdom said to me, do you know, Paul, as soon as someone becomes a name, as soon as they become a name, they just think they have just to, to turn up, walk around, walk away. I do much more than that. I, he said, the other day I was at Arsenal. He was an Arsenal supporter. Mm. He said, and they said to me, Norman, could you just walk around the ground? I said, what do you mean? Just walk around the ground? I said, no, I'll tell you what I'll do. And they said, what? He said, well, you watch, you watch. He said, I went out, went up to a policeman. I said to him, look, it was a football game. And there was about three or four policemen there. I said, look, can you get that strap under your chin and just put it here? They said, yes, just below your lip. Yeah. And I could take the hat off then, can't I? Yeah, you take my helmet off. Yeah, of course you can. Right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take your helmet off. Then I'm going to run. And you're going to get these other policemen that are here. There's four of them to chase me. And then when they chase me, I'm, let them, let them I'm, I'm in. I'm pretty quick. But make sure I'm in the penalty box when they all jump onto me, all of them. And then I'll get up and I'll still have the helmet. I still have the helmet and I'll kick it in the goal. And he said, brilliant. And he, the crowd went potty. Oh, they, all, they would. It was completely off the cuff. Oh, it is not going to be off the cuff, Paul. They've got them. You can't just lift. But that's what you do. Exactly. I, I, I've never, ever. And he, he was the best. He, um, Norman Wisdom. Always put on a show, Where, no matter what it was. If he was signing autographs or that, it'd always make them laugh. He, he was brilliant. He, he was brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Comedian. Arthur Asky, though. I worked with Arthur. Look, I worked with all the... Look, yeah. I worked for Phyllis Rounds. Phyllis Rounds found T Tony Hancock. She found Terry Thomas. She found Charlie Drake. She found them all. And she, she found me. And she said to me, um, I'm going to get you to work with all the old timers. You're going to work with um, Arthur Asky next. I worked with Arthur and Arthur, I said to myself, 
oh God, I've got to bring him on. I was bringing him on. I, I'll close the first half and I had to bring, Norm, bring Arthur on. So I said, ladies and gentlemen, Arthur Asky, you know he's getting on. So before he passes away, I'm going to get him on. And the crowd went, Whoa. And I thought, oh, I worry. And him, Arthur come out. And a big boy, ah, busy, busy, busy little bee, you know, buzz, 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 buzz. buzz. And he says, <laughs> I walked off and the, and the, uh, the manager there said, um, Norman wants to see you when you... Uh, I said, yeah, I know, I'm off. Are you? I, I know. He said, no, he wants to see you. And next minute I heard, Trevelyan, come here. <laughs> and I had to go right back out. I'm walking out. He says, how do you learn things? I'm walking out and I'm thinking, oh, Christ, what's he going to say? What's he going to say? And when I got there, he completely destroyed me, brought the house down. Every remark, he hammered me to pieces when I come off. And uh, I normally come in my dressing room at the end, end of the show and he said to me, um, we do that tomorrow night. I said, what, exactly the same? It's exactly the same. We do it tomorrow night and we do it the night after that. We do it for a week. I said, but um, he said, what was you thinking when I called you out? I was thinking, what's he going to say? He said, I'll give you a lesson. You should have been thinking, what am I going to say? Because you just stood there. You said nothing. Next time someone calls you out, think what you're going to say. Get a response. So these are all the little things that I've learned. I've learned from footballers. I've learned from, I've learned from, uh, I mean, when I was at Tottenham Tech, <laughs> uh, I didn't learn to read or write. I don't do joint up writing. I can print good. I can print good. But, um, and I didn't do his. I mean, uh, when I was at school at, at, at St. Francis de Sales, and uh, we got a, a, a um, we got a, um, I, I moved up a, a, a class and the geography teacher there, he said to me, um, Trevelyan, I said, yes, said, you don't like geography, do you? I said, look, I, I like to draw, sir, and I don't think it helps me. And he said, what about history? I said, look, you never learn anything new in history. He said, what are you talking about? I said, you never learn. He said, look, Trevelyan, you're going to learn geography. Do you know where Australia is? I said, um, can you walk there, sir? He said, walk? I said, well, <laughs> uh, 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 do you get a car? Uh, can you get a boat? Uh, what is it? I don't know. So you fly there, Trevelyan, you fly. I said, well, that's the pilot's job, isn't it? I don't know learn what the pilot does. That's a pilot. So all the class laughed and he said, right, you got detention, Trevelyan. And I went for the detention. I'm sitting there and he said to me, Trevelyan, you're lucky today because um, I'm only going to give you uh, 45 minutes. I said, not an hour. He said, no, because I have to catch a train at Bruce Grove. And it's a 12-minute walk. I said, no, it's not, sir. He said, what are you talking about, Trevelyan? I said, it's not, sir. It's six minutes. I've been doing that for the last 10 years. It's 12 minutes and it's a brisk walk. I said, it's six minutes, sir. He said, well, show me. So I took him out, sir, and I showed him all the back ways. How yes. I used to, yeah, because I used to go to Bush Castle Park to play football. I knew all the short. And he said, we're here. I can't believe it. We don't know. He said, she, will you show me this tomorrow? I said, yes. I'll take you. I'll take you and show you exactly how, how you can do this walk. He said, Trevelyan. I said, look, sir, I don't know world his world geography, but I do know local geography. And uh -huh. I'm great at local geography. He said, you don't have to do it anymore. No more. And I didn't do geography ever again. Fantastic. I the back and draw. Yes, which is what you wanted to do. It's great, isn't it? That's what I wanted to do. Look, you can always tell what um, if someone um, I I I saw a, a player uh, and uh, uh, Georgie Best, and I said to, I, I worked with Georgie Best, and it was the best way to play football. That's what we call it. It's a series. I've been doing him for three months, and I said, George, did you? How was you at school? I said. I never, I never paid attention. All I wanted to do was get out. I always carried a tennis ball in my pocket so I could get out. I could play with, even if it's just a tennis ball. I had to play, Paul. I had to play. Mm. What was you like? I said, 
And my mum used to say to me, you've got to go to school, put the pencil down. If your dinner's ready, put the pencil down. Paul, it's time to go to bed, put the pencil down. He said it was the same with me when I was playing football. And I spoke to Gascon, I spoke to Pele. They all said the same. The only thing that interested us, we didn't have any outside interests. Yeah, absolutely. If you've got outside interests, and a lot of players have that, they make it. And you think, God, they've done it. They've got it. They've put on a good salary and then they get outside interest and their football or their cricket. Absolutely. Whatever it is. In fact, Tottenham Tech did everything to encourage my drawing and my art. I even mm -hmm. did their magazines. And when I, in 1952, I remember all these dates. You see, look at this. I'm 90. I'm 90 years old and I don't... Young. I don't, 90 I, I, years young, Paul. Beaver. Nothing wrong with the beaver. I'm, a, I, I, I'm, 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 a, I'm unbelievably quick. I jump here, jump there, draw this. I'm always working on four or five different yes, things. that's good. And I'm telling you this, in 52, I went to Mansion House and to get the gold medal. And the Duke of Edinburgh gave the speech. And I listened to it. And the first words he said was, because he played cricket, he was a good cricketer, a really good cricketer, could have made it in cricket. And he said, life is not a game of cricket. There is no second innings. So give it everything you've got. For Quite God. right too. There's no second innings. You've got to give it everything you've got. And so when it all finished, I went up to him and I said, uh, I enjoyed the speech. I enjoyed it. I thought it was, he said, um, what do you do? Other than, I said, uh, um, um, I, I, I draw. I, I'm draw for the Lily White magazine. Uh, I, I work for the Weekly Herald. I'm, you do all it. What do you know about cricket? And I knew Dennis Compton played for Arsenal. So and I took a great interest in cricket because of Dennis Compton. I, I used to follow Middlesex. So I said, oh, I, I, I know the England team. He said, name it. I said, you've got Hatton, you've got Edrich, you've got Compton, you've got Evans. Is that enough? <laughs> Name the Australian team. I said, you've got Limble, you've got Miller, you've got Hassett. He said, that's enough. Draw them. I said, well, it's the Coronation Ashes next year, Paul. Coronation Ashes, you draw them. So I thought, oh, well. I said, look, I, I did a drawing of you while you was... Uh, he said, oh, look, this, this, I'm sorry. I, I said, well, will you just take it away? And my name's on the back. I put my name. He said, all right. He took it away. I didn't think I'd hear anymore. I got a letter from Buckingham Palace. Wow. The brilliant sketch. Loved it. Thought it was great. And it, that was published. And it got in all the papers. And every newspaper got on to me. And they said, we would like you to come and draw for us. So I went to the Telegraph. I went to the Times. And I said, can I draw the cricket? They said, no, 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 no. We want you to draw politicians. We want you to do a political... I don't, I don't want to do a political cartoon. But you did... I said, look, I, I don't want to do that. But you did his Royal Highness. I said, I know. Oh, no. You did the Duke of Edinburgh. I said, I know. You got a letter from Buckingham Palace. You'd be very... I said, no, I want to draw the cricket. And it was a sporting record got onto me. Yes. And they said, Paul, we would like you to draw for us a sporting record. I said, can I draw the cricket? They said, yes. And I did <laughs> every one of all the cricketers. All right through that. And Great that's story. Right. I've got letters... And then, do you know I had a signed? Philip. Imagine Wonderful. Philip. That's how he signs the letters to me. Yes. Kept in touch. We That's kept... absolutely fantastic. What a great story. And, of course, it's on the subject of people you've met, you've met and drawn countless sporting greats that include Pelé, Bobby Moore, George Best, Franz Beckenbauer, Jack Nicholas, Tiger Woods, Michael Jordan, Sugar Ray Robinson, Oscar De La Hoya and Wayne Rooney. Oh, this is quite a list. So, but who did you enjoy meeting the most out of all these guys, Paul? You know, probably all of them, I would say. That would be my response. But any great stories? And there other stories here too. Look, i tell you this. Every sports star has become a household name. Yes, as a personality, and what it is, they're very generous with their time. Yeah. It's the one thing I've learned, they're very generous with their time. Yeah, it's important. Talk to them, not the ones who are too tight to make it, not the, the ones who have really made it, they're very generous with their time. And I did a, 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 a thing on Pele, and I called it King Pele, 
and it was published all around the world. And mm. it was my my appreciation of Pele. And I had to do a book signing. And sitting next to me was Pele. And he was signing one of his books. And he looked across and he said, I don't remember doing that. I said, you didn't do it. I did it. He said, when, when, when did you do that? I said, uh, it, I did it for Stanley Pauls. It, it, came, it came out about six six months ago. Why? I said, it's in, goes published in every country in the world. He said, um, next book you do, we do together. Oh. And from that moment on, when it, what happened to it, the, the last thing he ever did, the last thing Pelly ever did, he got a chance to do Snickers. And they wanted to become number one. They wanted to become number one. And they got Pele and he, and they said, we're going to do generic drawings. We're going to get you. So he said, no, because he got to know me. I went to, he, he got me so many jobs. And he said, no, I want Trevelyan to draw it. It'd be the 10 commandments, the 10 things I do best. And we do them as little stickers and we put them inside the snicker bars. And I did that with Pele. And that was the last thing he did. And Pele, and I've got the newspaper. I send this to people. It mm. went to number one. It was the number one of all the of all the sweets, above Mars, above all the other ones. Fantastic. It went to number one. But Pele was such a gentleman, such a nice guy, mm. and he would. I, I look. I, I I said to Gascoigne. My Way, the autobiography of Lord Russell Baker. It's his raison d'etre, an exciting life of well travel, sport, business, mystique, danger, and of course, success, failure, love, happiness, and a sprinkling of sadness too. Whether breaking all the rules at 10 Downing Street, advising senior members of the royal family that they're sitting in his seat, or sipping champagne with a member of the KGB, I will deal with the situation in the only way I know. I'll do it the Lord Russell way. A true life story that truly has everything for everyone to enjoy and relate to. Something at every page turn to excite and drive your imagination into a new world. A book you simply won't be able to put down. You can read about some of my remarkable exploits in my way. Available now on Amazon in both Kindle and softback formats. Make sure you get your copy today um how, how good was pele how good was maradona i mean you you played again he said how good was maradona i said yes he said i got an orange i was eating an orange and, and uh i saw my i saw maradona it's a true story this and he, and uh, i've got the orange. i said what's this and i laid down on the floor now i've seen people stand up and try and keep the ball up and they're moving here, there, and everywhere. The ball's controlling them. Lay on the floor and then keep the ball in the air. You can't move. you got to keep it up. So I laid down on the floor and bump, bump, bump with the orange. And I got up. I said, what do you think of that? And do you know what Maradona did? Go on, tell me. Got his, shoes, got his two socks, rolled them in, into a ball, and then he did it with his socks, and he kept it up laying on the floor, and I thought, Different class. Different class altogether. I mean, they they are, I mean, I, I I got to know all the cricketers when I did the 53. I got to know Hutton. I got to know Compton. Uh, I, as Compton said, I said, you come down the wicket, Dennis. But he said, no, you, sometimes I come down the wicket. I come down, down so far, I forget what I've come down for. He said, <laughs> um, but he, and yet he could leave the ground. And no one ran up to him to come in, York, can you? Because he'd already signed them. I said, that no one's, and he looked being held up. With Norman Wisdom, Norman, I had to go and get him his ice cream every, honestly, every time. I said to Norman, what do you do when you go on holiday with the children? He said, I stay in the hotel. I said, you stay? He said, I can't get out. If I get out, it's, can you sign this? Can you sign that? Can you sign this? Can you sign that? I can't get out, Paul. So I look out the window and see him and I wave to them. And he said, I spend the, the, the week's holiday in the bedroom. And that is Norman Wisdom. See, mm -hmm. he said to me, keep your face out of the paper. Don't get your face in the paper. Don't get known. Then if you're not knowing, you can walk around Sainsbury's. I can walk around anywhere. <laughs> oh, in fact, when I, when I go, <laughs> look, what, what, 
what, what amazes me when I go anywhere and uh, and and I walk in and I, I went to I went to Disneyland because I, I love uh, not Disneyland it was it was the XL I went to the XL and um, and in in the XL that is they're celebrating a hundred years of Walt Disney so I thought I must go because I did the dwarfs and uh, I did the Caballeros I did I did Pinocchio I did them all I did Bambi so I thought I, I must go so I went there on my birthday and on my birthday actually on my birthday. And I've got a big badge, and it said on the badge, 90. So I thought, that's it. And everyone said, oh, no, I missed it. And I went in there, and I'm jumping about, limping here, and someone come up to me and said, you got your badge on upside down. Ah. I, said, I said, you got your badge on upside down, mate. I said, no, I'm, I'm 90. You're not 90. If you were 90, and that's what happens to me. When I go in anywhere, well, if brilliant, I'm isn't it? standing there, I mean this, and you see someone, oh, it's all right, love, don't worry, don't worry. You just take your time, take your time. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, you know, this is the money. And, oh, oh, that's all right, love. I'll pick it up for you. And he, they go out, he says, you know, she's good. She's 80. I said, really? <laughs> I'm 90. Uh, I said, but you, he said, uh, now, come on, son, hurry up. No tell me to hurry up. I'm <laughs> told to hurry up. I'm 90. Oh, it's an incredible story. Oh, well, look, when I go on holiday, I sit in a deck chair and there's another fella uh, sitting in a deck chair and there's a little boy kicking a ball and it goes over by somebody else's deck chair. It's gone over there twice and the kid don't want to go over there. And he says, can, can you get it? Can you can you get it for me, granddad? And he says, I've done my walking, son. I've done mine. He said, I said, I'll get it for you, son. I go across and I get it for him. See, yeah, what is the ball? He says to me, what? I can't believe that. He said, uh, you just got it. I said, yeah, that's right. I went out and got it. He said, well, yeah, I'm 70. And you've done your walking? He said, yeah. I said, can't believe it. I no. do a four-mile power walk every morning. Yeah, and quite every right, morning, too. I'm up at four. Oh, yeah. Listen, do you know what happens when you're in bed? That's where you die. Absolutely. That's where you die. die in bed. Remember that. So get out of that bed. I, I as soon as I wake up, I go straight into the bathroom. Good advice. Good advice. I look in the mirror, and if I see my reflection, you've you got another alive. day. You've exactly. got another day. Make it happen. Make it pay. Get out there and make it happen indeed. And, of course, talk about Disney, Paul. You are rated the world's top proponent, really, of comic art realism. And Disney animator Milt Neal said, and I quote, it took 20 Disney drawings to produce the movement Paul Trevelyan captures in one. I mean, that's an awesome statement for you, isn't it? Well, I worked with the great Mill Neil. And uh, it was with Pele again. Pele got me the job. Yes. And, and Pele, I was drawing Pele, and Milt was drawing the dog and the bull. And he could draw them unbelievable. He, he was the man. Mm. So, and Milt said to me, I said, do you know what, Milt? Um, I... I um, I used to draw Dopey, and that's my party piece. And I always, I still draw it. I still draw it now, now, now. And I don't think anybody draws it better. I've been, do, I've been drawing it all my life. And he said, draw it. So I did it. And then he looked at it. It took me two and a half minutes, nearly three. And he looked at it. And then he put paper down. One circle, another circle, boom, boom, boom. Less than a minute. And I looked at it and he said, you've got your hat pointing up, my hat's pointing down because I want to concentrate on the face. In future, draw I said, I'll never draw it again. I've seen yours, I've seen mine. I'm never going to draw it again. And I haven't drawn it since. That was 1994, I still haven't drawn it since. Never wow. touched it again. Now that was Milt Neal. And Milt Neal realised that, I'll be honest, why I get movement, is I cheat. I do three <laughs> movements in one. See, if it, if the player the player's running like that, I'll make sure his hands out here. I'll make sure so it, anatomically they're not correct. Mm. But they look like they're moving. Because I don't want a static image. When a photographer goes and gets the picture, it's static. So I don't want a static image. So I move the arms out, I move the leg, I, I cheat. And Milk knew this, and Milk said. What's so clever? You do three different movements in one. But 
it would take us 20 tries to do that, Paul, to get it to that level. But it's brilliant because it, it works, it works, it works. And he said, uh, I said, I would have made a great animator, Milk. He said, you'd never made it. You couldn't do it. I said, what do you mean? I, I, I could have been the best. He said, really? He said, look, see this little pad? There's 20 sheets in there. Draw the Union Jack and make it move in the wind. I said, what? He said, draw the Union Jack, make it move in the wind. I said, I don't know. Said, where, where would I start? He said, watch me. And then he flicked the pad yep. and the Union, Union Jack moved. The Union, it was, I couldn't believe it. How good. But look, the, the Disney anime, I saw all that thing when I went to the XL. And I saw that they, they got brilliant things out. They get all the drawings. You press a button, and it goes. <laughs> you see all the drawings move, and and they get them to go. But I did. I cheated. I pull arms out. I get arms higher. I won't. I, I will not have a static image. And that's, mm. that's a secret. You got. You got one of my secrets. I've just told you one of my secrets. You have. That's incredible, isn't it? I mean, it just well, shows what a great artist you, you are. This. Did you know this? I got. I'll tell you something. What a surprise. I'm, too, I'm going to surprise you. Go on, Paul. I like surprises. You're going to, you're going to love this. I, I, you're going to love this. I'm going to tell you this. Mozart died at 35. Schubert died at 31. Mendelssohn died at 48. Michelangelo was 80 odd. And so were all the old artists. And I got to know Dr. Barova. I went to. Um, I, I went to my doctor and and, uh, and she said, oh, Dr. Barova. And Dr. Barova can draw. She can draw. But she's known as the Michelangelo of medicine because she can take anything off and you won't feel it. Mm. And so I went to see uh, and I said, look, um, I will give you a lesson in my studio. If you do me a favor, you see this little mole here? She said, that's, com it's, that's benign. I said, I know, but can you remove it? She said, yes, sit down. I said, have you done it? She said, yes, it's gone. It's gone. Wow. She put a little, little plaster over it. She said, give it three days. You won't know it's there. Wow. I thought, she's the best. She is the best. She said to me, are you worried at confined spaces? I said, no, I'm not worried about them. She said, right, if I put you and you went to Harley Street, I said, yes, I'll send you to Harley Street. And I, I know a, a, a Peter Slazenak. Now, he will put you in one of those things. And I want to just want to know, I know that there's something about an artist who lives, through, they live forever. Other professions, they don't. Now, why do artists live so long? And I said, um, well, the only way I can answer that is because um, if my wife brings in a cup of tea and drops it, I won't hear it. Uh, when I'm drawing, and nothing matters at all. I've got no problems. No problems at all. Imagine that. Yes. All I'm doing is concentrating on doing the drawing. Because I've never seen a piece of white paper. What do you mean, never seen a piece of white paper? Well, if I saw a piece of white paper, I wouldn't be able to do the drawing, would I? When I look at the, if I'm going to draw uh, Paul Gascoigne, if I'm going to draw um, uh, uh, Stokes, um, I look at the paper, concentrate, and he's there. And I just, I just draw him. He's got to be there before I can draw him. She said, you've never seen a piece of what? No. She said, well, would you, would you go in one of the... I said, yes, I'll go in it. So I went out there, they shut me in, and they put me in, and they said, you'll be in there for about 20 minutes, maybe 30. And when I come out, they said, you're completely clear. Nothing wrong at all. I said, and I went there. This is true. You can check this out. If people want this checked out, because when I talk, People say he talks about all these different things. He makes half of it up. I make none of it up. None no, of it up. No. I was in uh, the London Clinic at the same time as Prince Charles. Imagine that. It's Prince Charles. And they put me in that thing. And I come out and Peter Slagenak said, Paul, we checked it again. Nothing wrong at all. You're going to get the Queen's Telegram. You're going to go to 100. So there you go. I'm gonna I'm gonna be around for a oh, long time. And I really hope so. Time Crikey. is because I know it's stop, and that's because God, life is not a game of cricket. There's no it's, oh, you've learned from it. You see, that's that brilliant story you said earlier on. Absolutely right. 
And, and, you know, in 2008 as well, you were interviewed in the documentary Roy about the life and times of Roy of the Rovers, a character you illustrated in the 1950s. The film was shown at the 2009 Cannes Film Festival. I want a moment in your life, Paul. Cannes, that's a, probably the biggest film festival in the world, isn't it? Incredible. Look, Roy the Rovers, I was working on the life story of all the different sportsmen, and we were doing it in the, in the, in the Express. And I'd moved on from Fleetway, and I got a phone call. He said, Paul, we've got some problems with Roy the Rovers. I said, what, what's, the, what's the problem? We haven't got an artist. That's a problem. <laughs> I said, OK, what is it? Well, can you come and get, help us out? It's just, just one series. It's 18 weeks. I said, 18 weeks? I said, look, I'm doing this and that. And they said, Paul, do you remember when you was at school? When you used to your... I said, I oh, know, I know, I know. You keep mentioning that to me. I know you helped me out. Uh, all right, I'll do it. I did Roy the Rovers, took it in. said, look at that. They said, can't use it. I said, why not? It's not funny, is it? It's a comic. It's a comic tool. But don't you realise? It's not paper. It's a comic. But I said, but look, Tubby's too slim. He's big, much bigger than that. And look at all... I said, look. That's comic art, realism. They're real. I just, as, I'm, as I'm doing the strips in the paper, I'm doing it real. Roy's is real. They said, can't use it. So I, I thought, that's the end. That's the end. Come home. I thought, I've got to carry on now. I did try. Got a phone call two days later. Paul, still can't get the artist. We'll have to do your work. We'll have to use it. I used it. And by the 12th week, Paul, we're getting kids writing in for his autograph. Really? Yeah. We'll have to get Kerry Dixon from Chelsea. He looks a bit like Roy. He'll get him to turn up and he can sign Roy Race. I said, <laughs> and then suddenly I'm at Tottenham Hotspur and I'm talking to Danny Blanchflower and Danny Blanchflower says, look at Cliff Jones. Look at him there. He thinks he's Roy Race. He thinks he's Roy the Rovers. And I thought, it's, cold. it's catching on. It's catching on. And it's still, look, I said to them, if you let me draw him and come at that realism, I promise you, a man who never lived will live forever. They said, do you believe that? I said, yeah. And all those comic strips then, a tougher talk would attract all these other people. No one remembers them. In fact, one there is one character that does get remembered in Tiger. And someone come up to me and they said, I used to like Billy Boots. I said, oh, yeah, Billy. He had magic boots. I oh, used to like Billy Boots. What happened to Billy Boots? I said, I didn't draw him. And he said, what? I said, I didn't draw him. If I'd have drawn Billy Boots, he'd still be around now. But I didn't. I did Roy Race. I did Roy the Rovers. That was the one that's gone. He's lived forever. They, they even use it now when they're talking on television, when someone scores three goals or someone does something sensational. They use the name Roy Race, Roy the Rovers. He's a legend. He's, he's, um, um, look, um, I, I actually, I did, I watched, um, Talking Pictures, and I watched Talking Pictures, and and I what the man today said, and we're gonna have on, the Beverly Hillbillies, and I'm listening, and he says, and do you know that, um, that the man uh, uh, um, who played the old lady, the granny, she was 60 when she got the job and she became a major star. And the guy who played uh, Clampett, he was a... And I'm listening to it and I'm thinking, I did that in TV 21. I'm working for Eagle, remember? I'm working for Eagle. I'm doing... I was clever here. I, was, I did Can You Catch a Crook? And I used to leave three <laughs> clues and they had to find out what they were. And I was doing, and then suddenly I, I love Eagle. I loved it. I loved it. And I said to them, it is a new magazine uh, coming out. It's, it's TV 21, TV Century. I said, it's uh, it's going to be big. I said, and uh, they're using the television characters. They're uh, going to do Burke's Law. They're going to do this, going to do that. And they said, um, no, we don't want to do that. No one to get kids watching television. We, we want them to go out and exercise and do this and that. I said, no, but it's going to come out. And they said, well, it, look, it will not be successful. So they got on to me and they said, Paul, can you help us out? Can you draw Burke's Law? But we want it drawn just like the TV series. I said, yeah, I can do that. What, what real? I said, yeah, real. They look really real. They look right. Can you draw uh, 
Beverly Hilly Bellies. I said, yeah, I can do the Beverly Hilly Bellies. And can you do all the monsters? I said, do all the monsters. And I did them. In 12 months, Eagle disappeared. And I loved that paper to death, but it disappeared. And that, everyone, oh, it's unbelievable. And I did Burke's Law and, uh, what's his name now? Forgot his name for a minute. He came over. See, I, I, it's a name I forgot. You see that? I, ah. I'm not 100% perfect. Ah. Yeah, that, no one is Paul. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, uh, um, Gene Barry. Don't remember him. What a man. What a man. That was a little trick there. A little trick there. I was playing around a bit. Playing a little around. bit. Trick down memory lane. <laughs> Gene Barry. Now, Gene Barry, he was Berkshaw, and he came over to the talk of the town. See, I've been around everywhere. People are going to say, he's making it all up. No, I'm not. <laughs> You're I, certainly I not. There, the I was there when Chapman the King was in the same, and I was there at the same time. It was two policemen outside. I had to get past two policemen. Then I went inside. You had to sign all different forms. And he yes. took, took me half an hour. Anyway, bottom line is, I went, he was at Talk of the Town. He was singing. I didn't know that. Anyway, I took my drawing along. Gene Barry signed it and said to me, I said, look, this is the stuff I'm doing. He said, brilliant. There's no one, there's no one can compete with you in America. That is the best. You've got me. That's brilliant, brilliant. And he went all the way through it. And that was what I was doing in TV 21. So he said, I, I, I never, the one good thing about me is I've never had my, I never let them use my picture. Every contract I've ever signed, can only use my picture twice. I only use mm. it twice. That's right, a year. That's a year's contract. I only use it twice. And that way, no one knows Paul Trevelyan. And I, I never, ever, I, I can't say, I'm like a doctor. I studied and studied and studied. I admire doctors. I admire anybody who studies and studies. I admire pilots who get into, how do they ever do that? I don't know. <laughs> but I was born with a talent. And it's the same as footballers. It's the same in sport. The one thing they want to do is to do exactly pick a ball, hit a cricket ball, or swim, swim, swim. It's, 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 there's nothing else I want to do but draw. And so I can't claim to any, I, I never once think, oh, I'm a bit special. I'm not. I was born. I could draw when I was two. It's never changed. I've got a, 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 a pad there. I look at my drawings when I was seven, look at my drawings when I was drawing um, Orson Welles, when I was drawing Bing Crosby, when I was all on the films. I look at them and I think, God, what happened to that artist? What <laughs> happened to him? He was good. But you change. You yes. do change. You, I've, my work is much different now to when I was there, but I look at that. I look at my one of Sugar Ray Robinson. And I, I challenge anybody to draw a better one of Sugar Ray Robinson. Mm -hmm. That's 1951. 1951, I look at it and I think, wow, what happened to that artist? I don't know what happened to him. And I look back all over the years and I wonder, I would like to get back to doing that. I'd like to get back to drawing like that. But I've changed. You get different and you do different work. Yeah, life changes. So I'm, I'm, a happy, what I am, I'm a happy man. You I'm, are. I'm, I'm happy. And I want to say to everybody who's, who watches this program, whatever you want to do, do what and, what, and I saw Walt Disney had it. Forget the talk. <laughs> Let's do it. Do yes, it. Do it, exactly. <laughs> and to be honest as well. Look, I, I do talks at, at schools, motivational talks. Yes. And the last one I did, I'm standing on stage and someone says, I says to them, what do you want to do? And he says, I, I'd like to be an author. I'd like to write some books. But uh, I've written 20 books. You've written 20? Yeah, I've done 20 books. Oh, cool, that's great. What, uh, what do you want to do? Uh, I'd like to be a singer, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to get a record deal with them, am I? I've got two record deals. I've got one with Decca. I met the Rolling Stones when they were at Decca. Yes. Oh, you, got, you did two record deals? Yeah, that's right. I've got two record deals. Oh, um, um, what do you want to do? Oh, I'd like to be in show business. And, uh, uh, you know, people think I'm funny. I said, well, I did... Summer season in Norman Wisdom. I work with Thomas <laughs> Cooper. I work with um, you, you name them. I work with them. I said, "Well, I can't believe that. I can't believe that." I mean, I work with Vince Hill. I mean, Vince Hill. Um, listen, there's people out there now. What upsets me? Mm. I'm with Vince Hill. He sang Arnold's Wine, whatever it was. 
and I'm there with him. And he says to me, listen to that person sing before I go on. What a voice. Mm. He's hit a couple of notes I can't hit. This is Vince Hill. I said, I find I can't find out where he is. So I went out and when he came off stage, I went to the table he went to. He was sitting there with his wife. And I went straight up to him and I said, um, do you know what you just did? And Vince Hill heard it and his wife and his wife looked at me and she said, Don't start talking about his singing. He's a plumber. I said, What what, what does that mean? It means that he earns four hundred pounds a week. He doesn't need to go up there to sing. <laughs> he was on four thousand. Think about it. Oh, absolutely. And that's it. There's people out there. They all told me, Cassius Clay said, when I get in the ring, I know there's someone sitting in that audience who could beat me. Mm. But he's never done it. He's never got out. He's never believed. And that's why Walt Disney. That's true. It's true. People, look, yes. for every, I, I, I know that as well as I draw, there's someone who can draw much better than me. And, and I know that. I accept that. It's just that I've, lived all my dreams whatever i wanted to do and now when i see people putting like that and they split their hands and i'm thinking i was the putter nutter i was the putter nutter and i thought no i don't i can't draw i can't well, putting's a straight line i did the pete alice book i said alice what why, why do you miss putts he said oh uh, every putt's a straight line it's the it's the green it's it's the um the, the uh rolls on the green that, that turn it into the hole but every putt's a straight line. I said, but you can't do a straight line. Michelangelo never did a drawing with his hands together. I said, I'll do that. Boom. And I did it. And I thought, I don't miss. From four feet, if I aim for six feet, aim for a hole six feet away, not four feet, and the speed of it takes out any borer, any borer on the green, drops in. So when I was at... Um, uh, um, uh, um, one working in Norman Wisdom. I've got all these papers. I show them to people. Mm. Everyone kept saying to me, "Oh, well, you're a good putter. Will you come on the putting green? Come on the putting green." I said, "I like, come on the putting green on, on, just once, because I never miss." And I said, "All right, well, come on." And I said, "Right," and bang, 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 knocking them in. They they not knocking them in, and they said, "Well," I said, "Let's do what I'm doing now. Let's have a bit of fun. Uh, you got a five pound note, yeah, but I'll put it down and." Uh, well, about four feet. I said, no, let's make it difficult. Do it six feet. Because that was the hole. That was the hole. And yes. then I just put it up and blessed it. the ball rested on that note. And I picked up all the money. Wonderful. Never asked me to come on the putting green again. And <laughs> I had a video in America. Listen to this. I have video in America. I can show this to people. On the back, the million dollar challenge. From four feet to the top fifty golfers in the world, and that was Nicholas, that was Player, mm. Palmer, Tiger Woods, you name them. That was the challenge, and I said, and they said, "What are you going to do with a check if you win a million? I said, "I'm going to give it to a local hospital. It's a check that goes to a local hospital, a million dollar check." So I'm just waiting now for someone to. Not one of them took it up. Not one of them. Not one of them. No Tiger Woods took it up. Because I don't miss. And the reason I don't miss, they put with their hands together. You can't yes. draw. I, I'm an artist. I can't draw. I can't draw like that. I can't draw like that. So why do <laughs> you hit putts like that? You can't hit a putt like that. Not straight. I watch speed. I watch uh, McElroy. Uh, I'm having a bit of trouble on the green. I've got my coach. He's showing me what to do. Oh, forget it. <laughs> forget it. You don't know how to putt because you're putting with your hands together. So uh, is there any questions you want to ask me? Because I've been talking and talking. You I've have, but it's been talk. interesting to listen to you, Paul. I was sort of drawing to an end anyway, but I'm just saying, you know, you say you're, you're just an artist, but actually your non-art life so far is as follows. And I've got a long list here. Let's just, just bear with me. A stand-up comedy career with supporting Norman Wisdom, as you've previously said, and Bob Monkhouse, of course, or two amongst others. A brief record deal. Being crowned World Speed Kissing Champion with over 25,000 kisses in two hours. Meeting and drawing Winston Churchill, as previously discussed. 
uh, devising a, a split-handed putting technique in golf, which we're just getting onto, I guess, there, drawing Yvonne Goolagong in the nude for the sun, inventing sock tags for Don Revy's 1970s Leeds United team, which was subsequently thrown into the crowd as souvenirs, and dressing up as DJ Bear, the panda of peace, in the 1980s to, to pacify hooligans, believe it or not, and spread love in the game. I mean, is there nothing you can't do and haven't done, Paul? Because you seem to have covered most things in life. Look, no. The, the reason I became DJ Bear, the Panda of Peace, because the railings were up. And I yes. came from America and I saw the railings and I didn't want them to come down. And I thought, and they said, um, I know it's the hooligans, they're going to jump on the pitch. I said, no, the, the football fans, I mean, look at the football fans at Bournemouth the other day. They, they sent money to the Luton uh, a fan said he didn't have to travel there twice and spend money. Yeah. They, they paid the fare for them to come for the second time. Of course, the game was postponed. But the bottom line is that I went round and, and the police said to me, when you sh shake hands, when they put their hand out, knock it away like that, they look as though you're shaking hands, but you mustn't do it. Because if you shake their hands, they'll pull you in the crowd. Mm. I said, well, why would they pull a, a panda in? I said, I spoke to Colin Moynihan. He was in the, in the Ministry of Sport. Maggie Thatcher backed the bear. Maggie, Maggie Thatcher was a smart one. Maggie Thatcher was no mark. She said to me, look, no, what, we, what we will do, Paul, um, uh, what you've said is very interesting. Uh, you, you, you get a panda and you, you're going to... I said, yes, I went to Panda Drinks. And I said to Panda Drinks, um, how would you like a mobile advertising board going right around the ground? How would you like that? And, and they said, well, that's good. That sounds good. Uh, yeah, it's going to cost us a lot of money. I said, no, it's going to cost you nothing. If you sponsor the bear, I said, well, what are we doing by sponsor the bear? I said, how many of your panda pops do you sell in the, I said, we don't have them in the ground, they won't have them. I said, they will after I've been around. They said, wow. well, what I said, I want five lads. Mm. And the five lads have bags, got to be like uh, uh, newspaper bags, big bags, because I want to make sure that on every bag, one's got a P, one's got an A, panda. I said, that's right. And then the five lads walk around with these bags. This is the panda, isn't it? That's your advertisement. Like it, like it. And what they're going to give away. And I was doing the 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 um the panda club in uh, in Match Magazine. So I said, I'm, they get out Match Magazine. That promotes Match Magazine. I've been to Panini. Panini mm. want me to give out one of their stickers with, with a book. So the kids stick in the first five. And then, oh, I'm going to get the rest. And that... What? We love it. We love it. We do it. We do it. We do it. And what happens with the drink? I said, well, when the kid gets a drink and he drinks it down, the little boy says, I want a panda drink. Go and get me one, Dad. And I guarantee once we leave, they ordered a panda drink. He said, it works. So that's what I did. I had to get it. I had to think it out. See, any every idea, if you sit down and work out, the way you want to do it, not how other people want to do it, how you want to do it. So whatever it is, when I was a World Speed Kitchen champion, I was at a, a thing in, in Cleveland, Ohio, with um, Dennis Goodwin and a couple of others, <clears throat> and a girl come up, she said, my partner won't do this kissing. And they got right through to the final, and I said, oh. And she said, will you do it? And she said, I asked everybody, and she come to me last. She said, well, what about you? And I got up and I looked at her and I said, take your shoes off. She said, what do you take my shoes off? What are we going to take them off for? What's that going to do? So she said, you're taller than me. <laughs> that makes you be the same height. So there's no neck stretching. Because I've been looking at some of the couples. Some are much taller than the girls. So they're going to do a lot of neck stretching. And she said, right. And um, what's the rules? Well, we have to hold elbows and we mustn't touch. Okay, so we hold elbows. And what we do, and you kiss for the first five minutes, then I kiss for the next five. But that's cheating. No, it's not. It's winning. It's winning. Absolutely. Right. That is it. So it is. you have to think. I was thinking while I did it. Yes. So whatever you want to do in life, if you want to write something, don't think, oh, I can't write that. I, I, I'm not the best. I, I, I can't. I, I'm, I get so upset. When I talk to people, when they said, oh, oh, you can draw, that's, that's excellent. Yes. Yeah. Well, who wants it? I mean, who wants it? Just do something that people want. Exactly you right. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. 
Edmund, they're not driven. You've got to they're be not driven. You're quite right, Paul. So, Paul, you know, what are you planning now for the future, be it art related or something completely new? Anything for the future for Paul Trevelyan? Look, what I'm what I'm doing now is beyond your imagination. Oh First, wow. The Winston Churchill, it's his 150th anniversary of his birth. Mm. This year. So for the first time since 55, the Churchill drawing will go up for sale. Wow. All the drawing. I will Amazing. Sell it. Because everyone said, you, why do you hold that? You put it in the bank. No one sees it. Uh, somebody else would like to buy that and put it on display. So that, And they're right. So I yes. agree to that. I will agree to do that. So that's the Winston Churchill thing. Now, the other thing I'm doing is... <clears throat> On, on Saturday, on Sunday, no, Sunday, I think, no, it's not Saturday, it's Sunday, Paul. On Sunday, I travel to Leeds and uh, I'm going there for the Millwall match. They still remember the bear, the DJ bear, the panda of peace. Brilliant. Uh, remember, because I went there and when they won the trophy in 1992, when they won the championship in 1992, the DJ bear was there. I was there with all the crowd. So they know the bear. They know DJ Bear, but they, they love the stocking tags. They still remember the stocking tags, and they still remember the coming out early. I mean, when I first said to Don Revy, look, get the players to come out. Don't exercise in the dressing room. Mm. Bring them out 15 minutes early. He said, all right. And as soon as they did that and they came out, because I said, I want people to see how fit they are. Get mm. Les Cockle to work out a routine. Bring out 12. Get the, 12, get the, the 12th man, the sub. And then four go that corner, four go that corner, four go that corner, four go that corner. Then they come and meet. And But what they do, they jump, they leap. I said, look, I saw them jumping off a horse. I wouldn't have jumped off of that with a parachute. But they're unbelievable. They're, and they're super fit. I've seen Tottenham train. I've seen Arsenal train. I've seen Chelsea train. I've seen them all train. Fulham train. But I've never seen anybody as fit as Chelsea, as um, Leeds. So... They came out early and everyone attacked it. They called it, oh, it's show beers and they're all coming out. But bottom line was everyone comes out early now. They do. That, look, when I look back on that and pick, when, and I go up there, I'm I'm in the um, chairman's lounge. Can you believe that? And do you know who owns, who owns the um, Leeds now? The 49ers. And oh, what, yes. what, what, that's the NFL. And yes. what do I know about the NFL? I did the drawings of the NFL. <laughs> and of the 49ers, I've got drawings of them when they signed. Yes. I did that. Yeah, look, I've done it all. And the reason yeah. I've done it all is because every day, every second, it's like I'm talking on the phone now, every second, every minute, I don't waste one. No, I don't quite waste right. I will be here tomorrow. Absolutely. No one's guaranteed tomorrow. you only got today. You're quite today right. The day. the day is the day. It you is. Know what, tomorrow. That's why every time I told you I wake up yes. and they straight out of bed. I'm up. I'm up at four o'clock on the four mile power walk. Two mile power walk I do. Four miles sometimes. It's sometimes I, yeah. I just walk and walk for the whole morning, thinking, planning. What am I going to do next? What's the next line? And I, I've got all these different things set up one after the other. I've got commissions that I'm still trying to do. I'm doing a guy named. Um, I, I could show it to you. I'm doing. I think he's, it's Leslie, someone, and uh, he was the first black footballer. Mm. And um, when they found, they picked him for England, but when they found out that he was black, he didn't get the cap. That's imagine shocking. that! Imagine that! Oh, it's shocking. I'm it. drawing him. I'm drawing him. Oh. I've just finished um, drawing Strachan, and that's for uh, um, the people at Ellen Ellen Road. Yes. I know the players. I'm doing a documentary for uh, Eddie Gray. And that's all about because uh, I said he could play on snow and not leave footprints. That's mm. his balance. He had that yeah. good balance. That good a balance. He was a great so player. No doubt about that. that. But look, I don't profess to be anything more than someone who can handle a pencil. That's all uh, I am. I'm nothing more than that. I'm someone who can handle a pencil. But I've always believed. In Paul Trevelyan. I've not listened to the doubters. Never, ever. Never and do that. That's what Milt Neal told me. Yes. He said, Walt Disney, 
no matter what they said, they said, oh, you can't do Disneyland. It's going to be a flop. Who's going to go there? He said, everyone will go there. The yeah. grown-ups will bring the children, and then the grown-ups, all the rides, all the things, you bring back all their memories, Mary Poppins, all those things. And that was Walt Disney. And Walt Disney always said, it's not the talkers, it's the doers. It and is. a lot of people I know, I, I talk to them and say, I'm going to... I'm going to do this. I say, I always say to them, do it. Ring. Yeah, ring. do it. And they say, well, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I said, start tomorrow. Yeah, now. Start tomorrow. Exactly. Get up and do it. That's what you've got to do. That's life. You've got well, to get, get up, up and do it. it. Absolutely right, Paul. Fantastic. And I've just had a quick look at the clock. You know, we're, we're well over an hour, which is brilliant. About an hour and 20 minutes because your story is so brilliant. It's lovely. But as always on the World of Lord Russell podcast talk show, we could talk forever, Paul, and I know you could too, about your life and amazing life in publishing, photography, as a distinguished and revered writer covering sport, royalty, and, of course, politicians. It's been a huge pleasure, as always, and as always, the pleasure is all mine, and, of course, the show's audience, when this podcast is released on the World of Lord Russell podcast talk show and the Lord Russell Baker TV uh, YouTube, YouTube TV channel. So thank you, Paul. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll give you Paul Trevelyan. Absolutely you, fantastic you, story. Really is. Because stay on for a while, Paul, and I'll just close down, introduce the next uh, the next guest, and just start to have, have a quick chat afterwards, if you don't mind. Fantastic. So the next episode on the World of Lord Russell podcast talk show is Hellraiser by the Menace, where my special guest will be Dennis Priestley, who is an English former professional darts player. Dennis won two world championships and was the first player to win both the BDO and WDC, which is now the PDC, of course, world championships in 1991 and 1994, respectively. Dennis was nicknamed the Menace after the Beano character Dennis the Menace and reflected this by wearing a red and black Dennis the Menace shirt and using red and black flights. Quite brilliant. What a story this will be as Dennis Priestley is one of the world's true darts characters. And, of course, uh, uh, I first met him, Dennis, of course, in Tenerife in January 2018, when John Lowe introduced me to tennis. A great story. So another exciting show to look forward to on the World of Lord Russell podcast talk show, available, of course, on all podcast media platforms and the Lord Russell Baker YouTube TV channel. And, of course, I'm looking forward to seeing you all on the inside. So until then, it's au revoir from him and au revoir from me.